thank you, Jesus, God, for everything you've done in this house already. God, I thank you, Lord, for the spirit that we feel in this place. God, I thank you, Lord, for everything, God, that you have done this week, God. You are a great God. You are an awesome God. We come to give you praise, Jesus. We bless your name, Lord God. Come on, let's live. Let's offer up the thanksgiving of praise right now just a little bit. God, I thank you, Jesus. God, you are a great God. You're an awesome God. God, we're going to pray for this service this morning, Lord God, that you would fill this place with your glory, God, that you would touch each person today, God, that you would touch us today, tonight, today, Lord God, this morning, Lord Jesus. God, you know what's going on in our hearts, God. You know what's going on in each one of our lives today. We pray that you would speak in this place. Pray that you would speak to each person today, God. God, I thank you, Lord God. Come on, let's pray right now. Let's seek his face. God, I thank you, Lord Jesus. God, I thank you, Lord God, for speaking right now. God, I pray for this city. God, I pray that you would fill this city, God, with your glory, that you would save this city. The city officials that's in Fort Worth, God. The mayor, God. The city departments, Lord. The fire departments, Lord God. God, the hospitals, God, we pray that you would touch. We pray that you would draw by your spirit in this city, God. Let this be a revival city, God. Let this be a city that's a beacon to this world, God, for you, Lord God. Fill this city with your glory, God. God, I thank you, Lord God. Touch our military, Lord. Touch each person, God, that serves in our military, Lord. Give our military officials, God, wisdom to lead our military, God, to keep this country safe, Lord Jesus. God, I pray right now, God, that you would touch and you would direct, Lord God. God, we know that you're a healer. We know that you're a way maker, God. We know that you give direction, God, and we want to be sensitive to follow after you, God. We thank you, Lord Jesus. God, we give you praise, Lord God. We give you glory, Lord God. Is anybody happy to be in this place today? Come on, the Bible says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Come on, let's worship him this morning. Let's give him praise. Let's be happy this morning. Let's worship together.
praise you today, God. For your goodness and your mercy, oh Lord, we will bless you, oh God. Thank you today, Jesus. We praise you. Come on, lift your voice in this house. God, you are so good to us, Jesus. Join me. 
voice in this house. He is the mighty God. Lord, we worship you today. We magnify you today. Hallelujah.
ought to try it. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! What a mighty God we serve. Thank you, Jesus. It's fun to join in what angels partake of around the throne day and night. Hallelujah! All they know is the glory of God. We know the glory and the grace of God. If he's ever been good to you, then amen. He deserves a hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Thank you, Jesus. I don't want to tax you with many up and down today. We'll let the Lord do that. But I want us to pray. Psalm 122 and 6. Can you put that up, sister? I'm sorry I didn't give that to you. Our mother is attacked again by the grace of God and a well-trained defense system Jerusalem was protected yesterday and I want to help somebody in this room prosper and it comes through the word of God the psalmist says it right there pray for the peace of Jerusalem they shall prosper that love thee. They shall prosper that love thee. Everybody say, that's me. I love Jerusalem. You may have never, I've never been there. But I sure enough have read about it. I have read historical. I have read uh, biblical. I have read prophetic words about it. And I feel like I've been there. But if you can fall in love with, not more than God, but Jerusalem, love Jerusalem he said you're going to prosper does anybody want to prosper you tired of being broke busted and disgusted all right here's your answer today are you ready we're going to pray for the peace of Jerusalem and we're going to turn those attacks back upon those adversaries that are trying to attack our mama in Jesus name father we thank you today for your goodness and mercy we thank you for this promise this prophetic word of promise to all the people and today, we stand in agreement. Would you lift your voice with me right now? Lord Jesus, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We ask today that you would protect them. We ask today that you would cover them. Lord, we ask today that you would defend them as you have for centuries. And in Jesus' name today, we thank you for the promise of God. That is yea and amen. And God, we speak today peace over Jerusalem in Jesus' name. God, protect Israel today in the name of Jesus. We praise you and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Would you clap your hands to the Lord and give him praise today? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, you may be seated. I'm not here to, I am definitely not an end time prophecy preacher. But I am telling you this, the end time will happen in that region. That's where the battle of Armageddon will happen. And so I'm not saying it's over. I'm, not, I'm just saying it's not time to play church. All right. Is this on out there, Brother Hill? You might need to try. It's not time to play church. Right. It's time to be church. <laughs> yeah. We don't know how fast or how quick things are going to escalate. I believe we shot down 20 uh, drone missiles last night uh, in one swing. I think it's what I heard, 20. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but uh, it, it, was, it was quite an attack upon our little nation. If you, if you think of Israel, I think Fort Worth's bigger than Jerusalem. I mean, I think Fort Worth's bigger than Israel. And so we're just talking about a small area of land. But it is God's land, and it is prophetically protected by the Word of God. And I want to be, I want to follow the fire of what God's protecting. That's what we want to protect in Jesus' name. So please, in your daily prayer, please pray for Jerusalem. 
I want to celebrate today what Jesus is doing at the Pentecostals. It's so fun teaching Bible study and seeing eyes open to the revelation of Jesus' name, baptism, and the Spirit of God move. Just last, uh, two weeks ago in the office, we're having Bible study. Uh, Sister Sierra has been here for nine weeks in a row, or nine weeks. We had to miss a few because of our travel and her, but uh, two weeks ago, we got to teaching on the new birth experience and she decided she saw that baptism in Jesus name was for her and she decided to get baptized y'all were here many of y'all remember that but what we didn't know is that I when I began to pray over her and tell her when, when you come up out of that water everything you've ever done from the day of your birth to today is forgiven washed away forever in the name of Jesus tears started streaming down her face and I said I've been around this long enough to know what's going on the Holy Ghost is in this room right there in that office in Jesus name and we, she lifted her hands and we prayed and the spirit of God came on her and she received the gift of the Holy Ghost can you thank God for that I'm telling you that to tell you it can happen anywhere. It can happen for anybody. But we love, we, we really love people and we love to celebrate. See, I want to give you a birth certificate today. Holy Ghost certificate and baptism in Jesus' name certificate. Her name's written in the Lamb's book. God is good. God is good. God, man. Thank you, Jesus. I am so thankful. I'm so humbled today to have our dear friends, Brother Sister Johnson, Brother uh, Charles M. Johnson II, Reverend, <laughs> my friend. Uh, he is the one that, at 22, looked me in my eyes and said, well, why don't you open it up and see? got to understand when he said that I could have just as well knocked his head off and been fine <laughs> that was the condition of my mind and my life at that time but instead I took that little denominal Bible and opened it up to where he told me to open it up and you know what it said exactly what his Bible said I said can you imagine so thank you brother Johnson and I'm saying this for a reason. I went to a Monday night Bible study with a big group of people. And look at where I am today. Hallelujah. Brother Johnson, I don't know the situation of all those other people that were in there. I think there was 10 or 11 in that Bible study. I don't have a clue. But I know about one. <laughs> it's just one Bible study. And I believe everybody in here can teach a Bible study. What if, did you, you, what if a Michael Watts could come out of your Bible study? Now, you may not like me, and that's okay. <laughs> I love you. you. Thank you. I hope you like me as much when you see me, Jeff. <laughs> I'm going to pick your brain and see what you think everybody looks like. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is good. But I believe everybody in this sanctuary can teach a Bible study. You can teach one. I know the adversaries whispering, and you can't do it. You don't know enough. You know what I knew when I started teaching my first one? Nothing. I had to follow the, I had to search for the books in the Bible just like everybody else. I used the cheat sheet in the back or the front, <laughs> wherever it was, to find out what book. I just saw the scripture. Let's go there. Everybody can do that. Everybody can do that, and it's beautiful, and that's what I'm telling you, showing you fruit right here and right there of what Bible study can do. So everybody get involved with Bible study. That's great. But I'm so glad to have our friends, brother and sister Johnson here. Uh, he is the one, the only person uh, that I know that's alive that, that could even speak to you about who I was. <laughs> and he only knew me 30 minutes, or well, one night, I guess. Uh, I made a special request. Uh, the next day to get baptized before church. They didn't know it, but I knew I had a ball game at, late that night, and I didn't want to miss the ball game, so I had to get baptized before church. And God's so gracious and kind, he, he let me do that. And you know what? He still washed away my sins. 
You know what else he did? So that I couldn't leave, he caused a torrential downpour come out of nowhere that I couldn't leave the building, so I have to go back in and hear that man say, is there anybody here who wants a, who needs the Holy Ghost? And I'm the only one sitting back there not with the Holy Ghost. I said, you talking to me? <laughs> and I made my way, and Brother Johnson prayed with me, and he left me, and then Jesus started talking to me about that alcohol. Can you live the rest of your life without alcohol? I prayed again, and that voice came again. I'm telling you, somebody's going to hear the voice of the Lord today. He's going to ask you a question. I'm telling you this for a reason. Can you live the rest of your life without alcohol? And I looked around again, and I realized, hey, something greater is talking to me than I know. And I said, Lord, I believe I can with your help. And you know what? He's helped me for 35 and a half years to live my life without alcohol. You don't have to have it. I'm telling you right now, you don't have to have it. Give that money to Jesus. Hallelujah. God is good. So he'll be open for questions in a minute after service. If you want to question who I was, he can tell you more about the miracle than me. But he's been by our side, stood beside me in tough times. Pastors a great church in New Bronzeville, Texas. Uh, one of the very fastest growing cities in America. And they are overrun and they are landlocked much deeper than we were over at Silver Saddle. So let's pray for them that God would have their way. But I'm thankful they're here today. We're thankful for you being here today. And we so appreciate all of our guests that are here. Tavia, we're so glad you're here. God bless you. Welcome to the Pentecostals of Fort Worth. We're glad Kimberly has brought you today. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. God is good. So glad to see you. Uh, Jill today. Where you at, Jill? I want to see your face. There you are. God bless you. Welcome to you. So glad you are here. Amen. We welcome you. Samuel. Where is Samuel at? Good to see you, Samuel. All right. Good to see you. Glad you're here today, Samuel. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. God is good. Gloria, so good to see you today. God bless you. Romeo, glad y'all are here today. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Good to see the Gilberts again. God bless y'all today. Glad you are here in Jesus' name. Hey, is God good or what? Martha, welcome to the Pentecostals. Welcome to Fort Worth. So glad you are here today. We welcome you in Jesus' name. Amen. Leroy, it's good to see you today. God bless you, sir. So glad you are here. Look here, church. The Lord has blessed us. We found favor today. You got friends to make, new people to meet. Won't you rise to your feet, pep in your step, bump in your jump? mint in your mouth smile on your face go introduce yourself to our guests make them feel welcome at the Pentecostal
it's good to see each and every one of y'all here this morning. Amen. I have an offering scripture is found in Luke chapter number 6, verse number 38. And it says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, and shaken together, and running over, shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet, you meet it shall also be measured unto you again. So we just want to give back to the Lord. But it all, if you read that text, you read before that verse, and you read after that verse, we immediately think it's talking about money. That is not what it was talking about. That is not what Jesus was talking about. We always take it immediately because it says the word give. But if you read that text and what Jesus was talking about, he was actually talking all the way back in Ruth when they were bringing in the harvest. The, when they would fill their cups with the harvest, they would a lot of times they would sit down and they would have a, a jacket or a skirt or whatever you want to say in their lap. And they begin to pour that seed into that cup and they, until, until it starts running over. And then whatever you got in that cup, you got to keep whatever's in that cup. So Jesus was talking about running over, what, giving them a mental picture of what that was, running over. If you read back all through that, it talks about not only about the giving like we we, we would to talk about today, but he was also talking about our actions and how we love one another, how we act towards one another. He was talking about everything we do in life. What you give out is what you're going to return. So it's not just talking about the money. Amen. So we want to just remember our tithes and offering that gives to the Lord. We want to give it all to Him that belongs to Him. Amen. Our, the 10% belongs to Him. Then our offering, a free will offering. But it's what are you doing in your time and what are you doing to one another? Jesus said it's going to return to you. So hopefully everybody's depositing good actions, good attitudes, love for one another, because guess what? Monday morning's coming running around. Well, hopefully it was all good. If not, we're in church. We can ask God to forgive us. Amen. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Remind us the, that he would remind us of our tithes and ask that he would, what he would like us to give for an offering. God, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to give back to you. God, we're going to give out, God, whatever measure that you have blessed us with. We're going to give all back to you, God. We're going to give love to our neighbor. We're going to give kindness to our neighbor. God, we're going to give love back to you, God. We know the tithes belongs to you, but we ask, God, that you would speak of amount of an offering that you would like us to give this morning. We thank you, Lord, for speaking, and we're going to be obedient. And everyone say amen. amen. You may be seated. If you need to tithe an offering envelope, please lift your hands. The ushers will get it to you. I just want to tag on to what Pastor was talking about, that he, thanking the Johnsons for coming. They spoke to our marriage, all the marriage people that were here led this uh, Friday night and Saturday. It was a great time. Amen. So if you were here. That word that you got was good. If not, if you weren't here, find somebody that was here. Ask them to give you the notes. Rehash it to you, whatever you got to do, because there's a lot of information. Amen. But we just thank y'all for coming. We know y'all left y'all's church to be here, and we appreciate y'all coming. Amen. Just a couple of announcements. Meet us out at the altars at 530 for pre-service prayer. We want to see everyone here. And then Brother Johnson will also be ministering tonight at 6 p.m., so please bring your family and your friends with you. Outreach this Saturday at 945. This week is Children's Ministries Week to serve and outreach. But as always, if you would like to be a part of that, you are more than welcome to come as well. Everybody say next Sunday. It's Evangelist Bobby Wade. We'll be ministering here, so you don't want to miss it. It's going to be a great time. God's going to speak to whoever's in the house and want to hear. Amen. You know, you can be in a place, and God can be speaking to you, but it can go right over your head. Amen. You can just, you just won't listen, won't hear it. Just go in one ear and out the other. You're Remember back in the day when you were little, your mom used to say, he goes, they're getting on to you and say, it's coming in one ear and out the other, and you either get a spanking or you get grounded. Maybe it was just me, but I remember that. But, but we want to be here, and we want to be have our minds open to receive what God wants to do because we are moving into a season of revival, and we want to be ready to catch that revival, catch that blessing that God has for each one of us. Amen. Let's stand to our feet. We're going to read Goshen. It's Genesis 47 and 27. We're going to read it together. It says, Israel dwelt in the land of Egypt in the country of Goshen, they had possessions therein, grew and multiplied exceedingly. Find someone and tell them they're going to get a raise on their job. Tell them they're going to get a bonus check. Tell someone else you're going to get an unexpected blessing. Tell someone else, may the blessing of the Lord be upon them. Yell across the room at some way, tell them I bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus.
Every hand raised right now. God, I thank you, Lord, for each one that's going to give. We're going to give joyfully back to you. I pray that your blessing would fall on this house. In Jesus' name, bring your tithes and offering joyfully to the Lord. today for the presence of the Lord. This next song says we're surrendering ourselves. Here I am, Jesus. I'm down on my knees again, surrendering my all to you. Maybe there's parts of our heart that we haven't surrendered yet to him. This is a good opportunity right now to open your heart and allow his spirit to move in your life. Breathe in me this morning, God. 
that with me this morning. I surrender. You say it from your mouth. I surrender. I can't hear you. I surrender. Yeah, there you go. I surrender. Why am I having asking you to say that? Because the Bible says you have what you say. And it's way easier to say I surrender than to actually surrender. But we're in the presence of the Lord today. And we can trust to surrender hurts, pain, sorrow, grief, mistakes, mishaps, sin. We can surrender to him today and let him have his way. I want to echo the words of Brother Matthew Northcutt. Thank you, Brother Sister Johnson, for pouring into us Friday evening and yesterday evening. Um, marriages, usually we just we, we compartmentalize, as we learned a few years ago, men have waffle brains and women have spaghetti brains. Isn't that what it was? Am I saying that right? You'd think so, yeah. Dr. Hughes taught us that. Um, and so... In my compartmentalized waffle brain, uh, I came away with one thing. I need to increase my wisdom to be a better husband, to be a better father, to be a better person. And I don't know what, uh, well, I'll leave that for later. I just speak for myself right now. So thank you, Brother Sister Johnson, for pouring into us. Great word. Uh, ten things to improve our marriage. That was great. And I love doing it backwards. My iPad didn't, but I did. <laughs> God is good. God is good. But, Brother Northcutt, thank you. And Sister Colin, thank you all so much. Excellent job. First class. And we, everything was done. T-top. And all that helped them. I don't know who they are, but thank you to everyone that helped. I want to say welcome home, Pop Taylor. Missed you. We're glad you're here today. And we're going to trust the Lord for total and complete restoration and healing in Jesus' name. Amen. So good to see everybody. I want to bring, I want to bring the man of God, my friend, Brother Pastor Charles Johnson, to the pulpit. And I want you to open your spirit. Uh, I've trusted him, his voice for 35 years now. And I want you to trust his voice also because God's going to speak to us in Jesus' name. Take your liberty, Brother Johnson. Come on, let's give a great big hand to our pastor today and our pastor's wife. We love you. Thank you, Lord, for some of the very best. Amen. Amen. And a little, hey, let me give a little shout out to my Melody today. Amen. Thank you, babe. And come on, give her a little love. Come on, Fort Worth. Come on, POFW. All right. All right you may be seated. I want to make a few comments before I read my, my biblical reference this morning. Um, it was 39 years ago that I landed uh, in Fort Worth and I was stationed in uh, at Carswell Air Force Base. Um, uh, young people are dismissed is what I, I've been told. God bless our young people. Bless your class today. Amen. Y'all come tonight. I'm going to preach. I'm going to miss you being here, but go be fed. Um, 39 years ago, Landed at Carswell and uh, went to a little Pentecostal church. And um, it was there that God revealed this wonderful truth to me about Jesus' name, baptism, and the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Um, I owe a lot to uh, Fort Worth. It was in Fort Worth where I found the Lord and walked in truth. Uh, it was in Fort Worth where my wife and I met and were married. Uh, our daughter was born in Fort Worth, dedicated uh, over at the Apostolic World Center where Pastor Watts and I attended. Uh, it was there that God called me into full-time ministry. And so I am indebted to, uh, it humbles me every time I come back to see the growth and to see the people. And your pastor is telling the truth that night. Uh, I was able to just share the word with him. And I remember him getting baptized. And I didn't know about the softball thing, or I would have told him, forget about it. But, but one thing, I don't know if he remembers this, but I remember when he went to the altar. And I saw one tear stream down his cheek. And I said, Mike, I said, that's the Holy Ghost that you feel. He lifted his hands soon thereafter, 
And I watched him. I was there the day that he was born again of the water and of the spirit. I had the privilege of watching him grow. We became brothers. I wasn't a mentor. We were brothers. We were born in the fire. Uh, he's been a dear friend to me. I'm honored, Pastor Watts. Thank you for allowing Melody and I to come. And, and to the North Cuts, we've already mentioned that. And I'll have more comments tonight. Um, I enjoyed outreach yesterday. Met Trevon and Marcus, and I'm praying for them. Amen. I believe God allowed our paths to cross, and I'm going to be praying. I'm believing the Lord to do great works in their life. I can't wait for this moment and also for this evening. I want to share my heart with you. But today, because of time, I'd like to um, just brief my comments and go right into the Word of God. And to our, our wonderful church family, to those watching online, we bring you greetings. And to the Greater Life family of New Braunfels, we're praying for you. Would you stand with me today? I'm going to direct you to the Gospel of John, chapter number 20. John 20. And I want to, and today, and I feel to share this with you. Um, I am not Evangelist David Smith. I'm not Evangelist Greg Godwin. I'm not Bishop Tom Foster. I am me. Is that okay? And I'm comfortable being me. Hallelujah. Amen. And you would want me to be me, and I know that. But I just, and, 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 and I, I, want to, I want to be pastoral and a teacher today. And so um, we're, we'll get going, but um, I want the Word of God to impact your life today. Amen. So let's look at the Word of God. John chapter number 20. And verse number 15, Jesus, this is after the resurrection, resurrection morning, he asked poignant questions, woman, why weepest thou, whom seekest thou? He asked a question, why are you crying? Why are you crying? Okay, let's go to the next verse, chapter 21 and verse 5, another poignant question that Christ asked after the resurrection, the disciples are out there fishing, and he says to them, children, have ye any meat? You caught any fish? They said, nope. I know that feeling. Hallelujah. Amen. But notice, he asked Mary, he said, why are you crying? Why are you weeping? And now the disciples are fishing, and he said, do you have any fish? Do you have any meat? Nope. And then he gets over to chapter 21, and he's going to be... In verse number 15, so when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jodas, lovest thou me? Everybody say more than. He didn't ask him if he loved him. He said, do you love me more than these? And then the last question that he asked is found in verse 22 of chapter 21. Peter is looking at John, who's writing this gospel account. And Peter has a question about John. And notice what Christ does. He said, if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? In other words, mind your own business. Stay in your lane. Are you with me, somebody? Don't worry about your brother. Love them, care about them. Don't worry about your sister. Don't worry. You, you follow me. Are you with me? Today, I want to preach, I want to teach on the subject, lingering questions following the resurrection. The questions that were asked by people and the questions that were asked by God. Father, for the next few moments, I pray for an unction from the Holy One. I pray, Lord, for the people that they would have ears to hear and they would receive your word. Let it be like a medicine to their soul and to their heart and their life. Oh, God, I pray let the eternal word, I pray, resonate in our spirit. Speak to us, God, and let us be children that will willingly, Lord, obey and follow you. Let the church say amen. Amen. Turn and greet your neighbor. Tell him I'm glad to see you today at the POFW. Shake hands with them and welcome. You may be seated. Thank you. If you looked at my notes today, you would wonder what in the world. I knew what I was preaching already. And um, about 5 o'clock this morning, I woke. 
And I spent a couple of hours preparing and praying. And then I was able to rest for a few more minutes before it was required for us to get up and get ready. And in my heart of hearts, I knew that I would be coming from this angle today, the lingering questions following the resurrection. Let me explain it like this. My wife can cook some of the best homemade bread that you'll ever eat in your life. And recently I was going to a doctor's appointment and she handed me a loaf of this bread, warm right out of the oven, had it wrapped in a towel. And she said, take this to the doctor. When I walked into the office and I gave it to my my therapist, my physical therapist, I said, my wife has sent this to you and to your team. The aroma absolutely filled the entire suite. It was beautiful. And it lingered. And it stayed around for a few hours. I have also enjoyed the lingering, beautiful smell of fret, fresh cut grass. And you've cut it and you're sitting there maybe on the porch or in the field and you're resting for a minute, maybe drinking some sweet tea and thinking about the rest of the day. And you can just get that lingering, anybody with me, that lingering, beautiful smell. We had a little rose garden at our home in Beaumont. It was the Lincoln Roses. We planted three of them, one for Melody, one for me, and one for our daughter. And every time they would bloom, they would fill the backyard with the most beautiful smell. We love it. And so if you'll go with me, did you know that smell is one of your greatest senses? And it brings back an automatic memory mechanism that kicks into your heart and mind. You can think of a, maybe a cookie or a cake or something of that nature or a meal. And you will immediately associate. You'll go back in time 20, 30, 40 years for all of us older people. And you can remember that. Are you with me, someone? It's just that lingering lingering. You remember the little lady in the Bible that lived a life that was not pure and when she heard about Jesus she took her, her perfume and, and she, she ran to him and she washed his feet uh, with that perfume and dried it with her hair and that lingering aroma just lingered in that room and, and it also went on him. Remember when he went to that whipping post and they beat him and when they crucified him that lingering aroma remained on his flesh. And so we find ourselves here on resurrection morning. Mary, the disciple, going to the tomb, and they had taken spices, and they wanted to do their duty as his followers, and their hearts were devastated. Their lives were broken. And the men had already come and looked in the tomb, and it was empty, and I think they kind of scratched their head like, what's going on here? You know, And they skedaddled. They ran. But the Bible said that Mary lingered. Oh, come on, somebody. There's something about lingering, amen, and and just waiting on God. And as she lingered and waited, standing without, she saw two angels, and it was nothing to her. She looks at them and says, "Um, we got a little problem here. Jesus was here, and they're talking to her. And uh, she said, you know, could you just tell me where he's at? I'd like to find out. And, and then she turned around, and she, po- she supposed this man that she was talking to to be the gardener. And she said, where have you taken him? She didn't know it was Jesus. In verse 15, he speaks to her and said, why are you crying? Why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Verse 16, he calls her by name. And when he speaks her name, the tears stop and the heart is revived because now hope and healing has been spoken to her. She recognized his voice. So she was seeking And she was looking, and she was weeping. And the guys were freaking. They ran. And the beauty of it is that she came back to their their area, and she is expressing to them that she had seen him alive. Because, see, they hadn't. And in verse 19 of chapter 20, I want us to see this. Then the same day 
at evening. Everybody say evening. He got up that morning. This is about 12 hours later. Are you with me, everybody? I have never heard anybody preach this. Because we romanticize the resurrection and we should make it big because it is the greatest event in the course of human history. But I want you to know, after the power and the glory was revealed, Jesus started reaching for souls. He'd already paid the price and the atonement was, was given. Are you with me, someone? He's now been laid in the tomb and now he's resurrected. But just 12 hours after he arose out of the grave, he appeared. Look, it's evening. And these disciples are shut in. They're scared. They're hiding because the body had been removed. And now the religious police and the Roman authorities, they have out you know, an all points bulletin, be on the lookout. They're trying to find out who stole his body. They're trying to cover it up. They realize they've got a mess on their hands. And the disciples said, if they find us, they'll kill us. So we're going to go hide. And they were hiding. And I want you to see what Jesus did. He walked right into the room where they were. And what did he say? Peace be unto you. So today, I've got a contrast between the questions that he asked and also the statements that he made relative to those questions. The first thing he offered to bewildered disciples whose minds were filled with fear, he said, I speak peace unto you. It wasn't a miracle it wasn't something monumental. He met them where they were, and at that point, they needed peace. If you are here today, my friend in the Lord, God can speak peace to your situation that you are facing. You don't need a miracle. You just need peace. Peace. Everybody say peace. The first manifestation that he offers is peace. And now i got to do a little sidetrack. I know what I'm doing. This is 12 hours after the resurrection. Everybody is in the room except for one disciple. His name is Thomas. We call him Doubting Thomas. And now I need you to catch this in verse number 26. And there's a reason why I'm teaching like I am today. Verse 26, please. Then the Bible says, and after eight days. So you have Easter Sunday morning, you have Easter Sunday evening, and then eight days, Monday week away, Thomas is sitting in there with them, and he said, I don't believe. I'm not going to believe. He's outgunned. There's ten to, uh, to one because he's the one that doesn't believe, and Judas Iscariot is dead. So there's only 12 of them. So he's outgunned, 10 to 1 ratio. They're telling him, maybe the ladies were there. We saw him. And all 10 of them were in the room the day that he showed up on Sunday evening, on the first, on the first resurrection evening, except Thomas. And he said, I'm not going to believe. I, I, I won't believe unless I stick my finger into the prince in his hands and my, I stick my hand into his side. Now I want you to see what Jesus did. Everybody say eight days. Eight days. <laughs> Jesus shows up. He says peace be unto you. <laughs> and he says hey Thomas how you doing? He said here's my hand. He said, I want you to feel those nail prints. He said, here's my side. Stick your hand there. And Thomas replies with one of the greatest revelations of the Bible when he says, my Lord and my God. But then verse 29 is inclusive of you and me today. Some 20 centuries later, Christ pronounces this. Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. But I want to show you something that's better than believing. 
Blessed are they that have not seen and yet believed. I'm tired of us equating blessing to finance, to the miraculous, and to this, that, and the other. I want you to understand today, my friend, my brother, my sister, you are blessed. Say it with me. I'm blessed. How are you blessed? Because I believe that Jesus is alive. I thought I'd get a little better, so I'm going to hang out there for a minute. You're blessed. You're blessed. Why? Because you believe. There's a blessing on your life. There's a blessing. It is a pronounced blessing. He didn't leave us out of the resurrection story. So here we are, eight days post-resurrection. Eight days. And he is speaking peace and blessing. Chapter 21, verse number 1. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples. Everybody say again. again. So hold on just a second. Let me add here. Uno, dos, tres. This is the third time. Why? Because these disciples are still having to take it in because they don't quite catch it all. They they get it. He, He walks into the room. He speaks peace. He talks to them about the Holy Ghost, prophesies it's going to happen. And now he's reaching for Thomas. He's giving it to them in bite sized pieces so they can comprehend it. And so a few days pass, and Jesus shows up, and folks, he is standing on the lake. The Sea of Tiberias, and the Bible says in verse 1, and on this wise showed he himself. Oh, God loves to show himself. So the disciples, they go fishing. And then Jesus poses his second question post-resurrection. Children, do you have any meat? Nope. Verse 6 of chapter 21. And he said unto them, cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. I would have loved to have been there and seen that. God had those fish waiting on the other side. When they realized that they were empty and their efforts had not produced what they needed, he was standing there with a word. Children, do you have any meat? Nope. They didn't even recognize him. So just throw the net on the other side. It starts to fill up. And Peter gets to looking and John says, that's Jesus. Peter throws on his T-shirt. He jumps in that water, and he swam to Jesus. I believe, this is my opinion, that he got about knee-deep, and he stood up, and he started walking to that shore and said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The last time I saw you, I denied you. That's just my opinion. I can't prove it, but I, I really do believe that. He came out of that water repenting. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Now, I want you to see this. I've never heard this preached. I didn't get this on the Internet. God gave it to me and gave me this message, and he gave it to me for this church. Before the cross, everybody say before. The last time all the boys were together, Jesus, God manifested in flesh. Gets a, gets a basin, some water, and a towel. And he humbles himself and gets down and says, uh, let me wash your feet. And he serves his creation. Peter said, I don't want nothing to do with that. Peter, Jesus said, if you don't let me wash your feet, you'll have nothing to do with me. Me and Peter got a lot in common. I said, my God, give me all of it. Pour the water on me. Whatever you have to do. After the, after the cross. So before the cross, his last act with all of them was to give them the last supper and wash their feet. And now he is the resurrected lion of Judah. 
went in a lamb and came out a lion. Went in beaten with 39 stripes, came out with a glorified body. Walking through walls and speaking peace and blessing on everybody. But I want you to see this one. Now when they get to shore, he said, y'all pull that net up here. Give me some of them fish. I want you to see that. I know this is simple. But he said, man, we got a fire. And uh, we got some bread. Verse 13. I didn't give this to the media team. Forgive me. 21, 13. He came and he took bread and he gave it to him. Wait a minute. Last time you gave us bread and you gave us the cup of communion. But now here you are resurrected, and you're waiting on me? He was showing them that as the Lord God of heaven, he was not too good to serve and to minister to their needs. And he fed them, and he fed them. And he gave, everybody say gave. gave. They're sitting there like awestruck. He looks at them, says, come and dine. He's got the fire ready. They're eating. And now Jesus is going to ask another question. Verse 15. Simon, son of Jonas. Do you love me more than these? That's the question God is asking the modern day church. Not do you love me? Do you love me more than? Do you love me more than? For Peter, it was fish. For pastor, it was, do you love me more than alcohol? Do you love me more than your addiction? Do you love me more than your promiscuous lifestyle? Do you love me more than this or that? And you have to fill in the blank because your blank is different than my blank. Do you love me more? Everybody say more than. God's not looking for people that love him. He's looking for people that love him more than these. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everybody say more than. I'm tired of talking to people. They're trying to excuse and get by on the willy-nilly and the barely get by. I want to preach to you today to encourage your faith. God wants you to love him more than anything, anything. I love him more than anything. There is no thing that I love more than him. You know why? Go with me now in history, biblical history, human history. Go back to the book of Genesis chapter 12. When God calls a man named Abram, he's 75 years old. In Genesis 23, when he dies, he's 175. God deals with that man for 100 years. I've never heard anybody teach that. But he's in about his sixth decade of walking with God. And God says, I want you to offer your boy. Abraham never blinked. He said, man, that ain't no problem. He got up the next morning. He saddled that donkey, grabbed that boy and a couple of servants said, mama, we'll be back. Me and the lad, we're going over there. Somebody help me to worship. Everybody say worship. Sacrifice is not worship. Pardon me. Sacrifice is worship. He said, we're going yonder to worship. We're going to sacrifice. You can't worship without sacrifice. Yep, you'll catch it. Come on, church. You can't worship without sacrifice. 
I didn't come in here today like God owed me anything. I came in here and I said, God, I got two hands that I can raise. I've got strength in my body. My ears work. My legs. I can stand in the presence of God and I can lift my voice. It's my honor to come into your house. It's my privilege to be able to lift my voice to you. I love you. So here's Abraham and God asked him to do this inhumane act. Why? Everybody say, why? why? That's a good question. Because most of us would have been saying, oh, mm, mm, nope. Mm, mm, mm. No, God, God asked too much of me. But you see, you have to understand the context. I'll tell you a story. I was in the local uh, supermarket there when this transpired. One night, it was a Sunday night after church. And I had that Sunday night look. Ty was kind of off center and hair kind of goofy and shirt wrinkled. And I'll never forget it. Brother Northcutt, I had a, a gallon of milk and a loaf of bread. Because I got that call from my wife. She'd already gone home. She said, baby, stop by and get a gallon of milk and a loaf of bread. And I'm standing there. Y'all going to have to forgive me. With that Sunday night look, all right? It's been a long weekend. And I just happened to look in front of me, and the young lady and her, her boyfriend were, were standing there. And, uh, and I mean this as a compliment. I don't mean this ugly. Don't misunderstand me. But she had seven earrings in her ear, and the boyfriend had the other seven. And I'm standing there, and I just happened to look, and I, and I, I, made, I made eye contact, and, and they turned and looked at me, and they said, what are you staring at? I said, well, I need to be honest. I said, I've never seen anything like that in my entire life. That's pretty cool. <laughs> they said, man, that ain't nothing. She pulls up her, her shirt, and she shows me her belly button. She said, look here. I got my belly button showing. I said, Wow. The girl that was at the register, Sister Watts, she said, hey, mister, look here. Boom. I got my belly button pierced. And I said, oh, my. Three rows down, the other cashier said, hey, mister, look. Hey, here's my. And I said, I said, man, I ain't never seen nothing like this. Then the little girl that I was talking to, she about 16, she said, man, that ain't nothing. Look here. She stuck her tongue out. And she said, that, uh, uh, that really hurt. I said, oh, baby, are you okay? She said, man, I got an infection, had to take antibiotics, and, you know, they told me not to take it out, and, and, but it's fine now. And I'm like, what, what do you say? <laughs> Y'all going to think I'm lying, but one of them, you know, was trying to go on up here where they had other stuff, and I said, hey, 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 I got it. Stop. Paid my little bill. I walked out the door and forgive me. I stepped on the little mat and the little door opens. And when I did, God spoke to me and said, tell my people to love me as much as the world loves their God. God right. Willing to talk to a stranger and tell them about their experience. Willing to have pain in their body and endure any kind of ridicule because, well, it, was, it wasn't normal. God spoke to me and said, tell my people to love me as much as the world loves their God. And so to the church, I preach to you today, not do you love him, but do you love him more than these? Do you love him more than you do football? Do you love him more than the baseball team? Do you love him more than your career? Do you love him more than your hobby and your habit? Do you love him more? Everybody say more. Come on, Pentecostals, more. I love him more. Now let me just break the news to you, babe, so you understand it. God doesn't do that. Just right out of the gate. There's levels of growth and progress in God.
39 years. And he's still asking me, Charles, do you love me more? More. More. I'm hurriedly coming to a close. Three times he asked this question. Simon Peter, do you love me? Feed my sheep. So here we go. Y'all catch it. Here's the gold nugget. Jesus offered peace. He offered provision. But when he said, Simon Peter, do you love me more than these? He offered purpose. You will only find your purpose in God when you love him more. That is good word. That's good word. Peace. Forgive me, everybody. God is so good, he gives peace to everyone. Hold on. God is so good, he'll just give provision to everyone. But he doesn't give purpose to everyone because the purpose and the, and, and the link between your eternal purpose and your destiny is your love for him. When you tie into loving him, it's more than just peace and it's more than provision. Now God gives you a purpose. A purpose. What? Feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. The man's life was radically changed and now has a purpose. And then he takes that purpose and Jesus prophesies to him. Said, hey, you're going to be an old man and they're going to lead you about and you're going to die this way. They're going to stretch you out. Mm-hmm. And then Peter, he looks over at John, verse 21 of chapter 21. Peter looks and he sees this disciple. And he said to Jesus, Lord, what shall this man do? He said, I got it. Peace, provision. Now I want to be nosy. I've received your prophecy. And watch what Jesus does in verse 22. What is that to thee? It's the fourth question. After he rose from the grave, he answers. Woman, please. Children, have you any need? Simon Peter, do you love me more? And just to keep you in focus, what is that to thee? He's the God that can ask a question. In the Garden of Eden, it was, Adam, where art thou? And you can look at all of the questions. Why stand ye halt between two opinions? Joshua gives the command, choose you this day, because they had a question whether they were going to serve God or not serve God. Caleb said, give me my mountain. The question was, was that generation going to stand up and take what God had promised them? Yep, we see all of that. But in this rare occasion, post-resurrection, prior to Pentecost, he said, hush your mouth, boy. Don't worry about that. Stay in your lane. What is that to thee? If you're not careful, you'll let your purpose mess you up in your definition and relationship with other people. Because you expect them to have the same purpose, passion, and power that you have. Oh, I, got, I feel the Holy Ghost. I could talk in tongues right now. I have to control myself. Under the anointing. When are we going to realize that he gives to some 30, some 60, and to some 100? 
When are we going to stop and realize that wait just a minute, your cost and your cross is different than mine. I have no right to question your, your, your walk or your cross and what it costs you. I'll tell you what, I have enough of a challenge carrying my cross. I got to take up my cross, Pastor. I got to deny myself. I have to take up my cross. I have to follow him. And my cross is different than your cross. And your cross is different than my cross. Stop looking at people because they don't have the same purpose you have. I'll give you a little illustration and I'm concluding. My pinky has a purpose. And I appreciate that little sucker right there. Thank you, Lord, for two of them. Two little pinky toes. This little piggy went to market. This little piggy stayed home. This little piggy had roast beef. This little piggy had none. All five little piggies had a different purpose. This one said, wee, all the way home. <laughs> Come on now. You don't think that little pinky toe is important? Smash it against the bed tonight on your way to bed. You're going to get to, oh, you're going to get to hop it. You might not dance at church, but you're going to be like, oh, Jesus. Come on, somebody. God put us together as a body, and everybody in this church has a God-ordained purpose. And the body maketh increase of itself. And everybody, the scripture says, has a role in the health of the body. Well, bless God, you don't pray an hour a day. And I do. Well, I'm, I'm so proud that you're praying an hour a day. There's been some days, and I'm a pastor, there's some days I, if I get to pray two minutes, I'm thinking, God, I got to pray two minutes. I woke up late. I'm running behind. And you will, I don't want to paint you some rosy picture of Christianity. I got to deal with my flesh just like you do. Come on, somebody. That man of God needs a word of encouragement just like you do. That man of God needs prayer just like you do. That man of God needs a pat on the back just like you do. Come on, church. We're human. Come on. My point is, is this. Don't worry about your body. Love them. Help them. If they get crazy, look at them and say, son, you're crazy. I tell you what, I'm going to tell Jesus on you. You don't put it on social media. You don't call 12 saints in the church. Hey, did you hear something? Just go to God in prayer and say, God, I'm going to tell you what, that brother crazy. God, deal with him. Lord, help him. Are you with me, church? Are you with me, church? I'm shutting it down. Here we go. Stand up. This plane's coming in for a landing. Everybody say peace. peace. Everybody say provision. provision. Purpose. And then prophecy. Destiny. Stop worrying about what's going to happen 10 years from now. You can't take care of what's going to happen 10 seconds from now. Why are you going to worry about something you ain't got no control over? Jesus said, by, by taking thought to that, you cannot add, add one measure to, to, your, to your statue. God created you. He knows where you're at. He knows what, if tomorrow's going to come, he's going to take care of it. Everybody say peace. peace. Live in the peace of God. Stop. Listen. Live in the provision of God. Well, it's only a two-bedroom, one-bath apartment. You're not on the street. Well, I got a little bit of used furniture. You got some furniture. Well, we down to one car. You ain't walking. Well, the air conditioning is out. You ain't walking. 
I know what it's like to abound, and I know what it's like to be abased. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I'm going to walk in his peace. I'm going to walk in his provision. But here's the crux, and you caught it. I'm running it back by you. This is the second helping of dessert. Everybody say purpose. Christians today stop at peace and provision. That's all they want. They treat God like Santa Claus. Give me, 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 give me. But he wants to take us to another level. But he can only do that because we love him. More than anything. Let's sing it. This is an altar call, not for peace wealth, and not for prosperity, more than life but for purpose. Itself, for purpose. I love you, Would Jesus, you come close and love him right now? I'm calling you as the body. I'm calling you as the church family. I'm calling you as a believer. I'm calling you as a child of God. I'm calling you. Come on. If you're here today, you say, I'm not a member here. I'm not asking for members. This is not a members only club. I'm asking you, come, come. We've got some prayer workers that'll pray with you right now, a prayer of faith. If you need God to give you peace over a situation, share that with them. But for the saints of God, would you come? Would you give your life to him? Would you lift your hands all across this sanctuary right now? In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God, I pray that you would draw. More than anything, God, let us fall I in love with you. you. Jesus, this is a love relationship. This is not a coercion. Anything, this is not something that we can force. God, teach us how to fall in love with you and to give you itself. ourselves, God. I Come on, right now, you, there's power Jesus, being poured out in this altar. Come on, church. Come on to the saints of God, to our friends, our guests that are here today. Come on. Let's pour out our heart. Come on. I'm going to do it one more time. I'm asking you. I'm pleading with you. Please come close. Come. Come to this altar right now. Come stand in this altar right now. Come kneel in this altar right now and lift your hands to him. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. If you're hurting today, if you're lonely, Lord, I need you. I love you. I feel your love in this house today, God. I need your forgiveness. I need you to wash me. I need you to cleanse me, God. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, praise God. I love you, Jesus. Draw the souls of men and women right now. Draw the souls of every precious person in this room, in this sanctuary, God. You're asking them a question today. Do they love you more? Do we love you more, God, than our 21st century lifestyle? Do we love you more than, God, our modern conveniences? Do we love you more, Lord? Oh, God, you're asking us, do we love you more? God, help us to fall in love with you more. Not just an emotional response, but a dedication of the heart with the Lord knowledge and an understanding of your word. I love you. I love you. I want to know you. Come on, if you're here today and you need to ask Jesus into your heart, you need to forgive, be forgiven of your sins. Come on, talk to him. Lord, would you wash me right now? I believe that you can forgive me, God. You can wash me, Lord, from these, Lord God's sins and these hindrances in my life. Wash me, God. If you need to be baptized today in the only saving name, the water is ready. Amen. We, we can baptize you. If you need healing in your body right now, come. We'll lay hands on you and pray the prayer of faith. Lord, I need you. I need you. Come on, let's worship God.
Jesus more than anything, more than anything, more than anything. I love you, Jesus, more than here to know you. you didn't drive in that parking lot by accident today you had the purpose whenever you left somewhere or drove by however you got here you had a purpose on coming here and I believe our purpose on being here together today is so that we can all go to heaven together but in that is this thing called life <laughs> Our adversary's number one job, Sierra, is to convince us that we have no purpose. They don't need me. I'm going to expose that liar right now. He's a lying fool, devil, and I hate him. Josie, you have a purpose. Monica, you have a purpose. James, you have a purpose. Lamont, you have a purpose. 
Gloria, you have a purpose. Juan, you have a purpose. I, 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 I'm sorry, I can't call everybody's name. We'd be here till lunchtime, past lunchtime. But I'm just, I, I want you to understand. Brother, you have a purpose. You know what I so appreciate about this word today? God knew the full decision of the Apostle Peter. Three times he denied him. And Jesus said, hey boy, <laughs> drop your net on the other side. If you think God's going to smack you upside the head, and he, he may need to. But he'll do it after he blesses you. I've had a few smacks. No, he, he doesn't smack you to death. He just says, hey, look, remember your purpose. But I want everybody here to hear me today. First time here, second time here, fifth time here. Been here all the time. You have a purpose. You're right where you belong. Stetson, you're right where you belong. The question is, are we doing, fulfilling our purpose in his kingdom? Pastor Johnson started with all these questions, and I, I think this is the main one. Are we doing all we can do? Now, I'm not trying to condemn you or convince you to do more in the church. I'm talking about your prayer life. I'm talking about your devotion. We're on day five of these 40 days of follow the fire. And you know what? I'd rather have you do 35 than none. If you hadn't started, guess what? Today's a great day to start. Join us. God's going to do some wonderful things in these coming days. You hear me? He's already done some, but I want you to know there's, there's time. And I want you to grab somebody's hand, and I want you to speak to them and affirm to them today, you have purpose. You have purpose in the kingdom of God. You have purpose in the church. You have purpose in your family. And your soul has purpose. God created you for his own glory. He created you on purpose. He made me look just like he wanted me to look. And I'm still asking why. But I accept it because it's my purpose. In Jesus' name. Lord, thank you for the word today. Thank you for the spirit today. Thank you for this church family and body. Thank you for all those that prayed through the night all day yesterday. I thank you for the conclusion. God, I pray for everyone that's fasting 40 days of something, everyone that's praying and committing to Bible devotion and giving sacrificially over these 40 days, these revival services. Lord, thank you today for the lingering questions following the resurrection today. These 40 days of fire are going to present some opportunities, and God, help us be prepared to answer you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the word. Thank you for drawing by your spirit today in Jesus' name. Clap your hands to the Lord and give him praise today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What a great God. To our first-time guests, please stop by the impact room on your way out through these double doors on the left, through the next set of double doors. We have some refreshments for you, information about upcoming events. For the next five weeks, we'll have revival services every Sunday.